Now filling the PolyScience LM6 mini chiller is rather simple. We use propylene glycol. We pour that in here gently with a funnel and then we top it off with water. It can be distilled water, that's preferred. Um, if your water has a lot of calcium or minerals, that's something that we don't want to do. We don't want that in the mix. So we fill the reservoir all the way up with water. We let the system settle. It starts to circulate through the condenser coil here. It's a good time to monitor any of your connections for leaks on your glassware and on the rear of the chiller. You'll see air bubbles as the unit starts to settle and air is removed from the system. Once it, it is nice and clear, place your cap back on. Allow the unit to get down to temperature. It's at about nine and a half C right now, but we have it set for minus four. Minus four, minus five, that's about the, uh, the optimal distillation temperature as far as the condensation will go inside the condenser coil here in this whole distillation process. Still at 9.1, but the glycol will allow this to move a lot faster than just water. We wouldn't even be able to hit the negative temperatures if we did not have the glycol mix. Propylene glycol is a food safe antifreeze. It's found very commonly in cosmetics. It's also found in things like windshield uh, washer fluid, plain de-icer. It's safe for the environment, non-toxic, food safe. Doesn't come in contact with anything in here, but should you ingest it, it's not, uh, it's not poisonous, it's not toxic. Uh, so it circulates throughout here, chills this whole process down. Once we have reached our temperature in here, we could heat our bath. We can start rotation. We have this rotating at about 260 RPMs. Turn on our vacuum pump. Draw a vacuum on the entire system here. We have our manually controlled stopcock. And there's two holes. There's one hole on the outside of this glassware and one hole on the inside of the stopcock there. Have you, if you had the, the inlet pipe connected, that would feed all the way down throughout this entire system. And using this would be a little bit more cumbersome. That's why a lot of chefs prefer to just leave it off. You can hold vacuum by rotating it so that these holes do not line up. We can break vacuum. We can shut the vacuum pump off to break vacuum that way as well. And as you can see, if you can easily remove it, you've broken vacuum. Since distillation is such a lengthy process, it's good to break vacuum every once in a while. Smell, get the aroma, take a small taste, pour it into a vial or a pipette, get a small taste because this is such a lengthy process. You don't want to spend hours and not have the right result. Clamp it back on, tighten it up, turn on the vacuum pump, make sure this is closed, and you're back in business. Distillation, generally for about a liter, at a 40C. Give or take, will take two to three hours to get a proper concentration on this side or distillation on this side. You can certainly run it a lot lower. You can bring your vacuum level a little bit lower as well. Simply just open it ever so gently on the stopcock here.
but if you lower your temperature, lower your vacuum pressure, you can slow this process down. Some chefs to have, prefer to have a nice gentle distillation that can take upwards of six, seven, eight hours. Most distillations, however, two to three hours is, is typical for about a liter.